Now the Three Martini Lunch with Greg Columbus and Jim Garrity. Welcome to the Three Martini Lunch. I am Brett Winterbull in for Greg Columbus, joined by Jim Garrity. Hey, Jim, how are you? Brett, good to have you back. It is great to be back. And I'll tell you, I'm looking at the array of martinis uh, coming uh, coming across the room to us, and, and they're all very, very interesting. Let's start with the good one. Uh, poll numbers looking pretty good. What's happening here, Jim? Sure. Well, the New York Times and uh, the Pew folks have a new poll out this morning, and kind of a couple elements jump out here. The, the short version, and I put this up on Campaign Spot, is that Democrats uh, Kay Hagan of North Carolina, Mary Landrieu of Louisiana, are in trouble. Uh, one of the things that kind of jumped out and was surprising was uh, Democrat Mark Pryor, of uh, Senator uh, of Arkansas, uh, was up by 10 over Tom Cotton, who most Republicans think is one of their top uh, challengers for this cycle. So it was a little, oh, they also found uh, Mitch McConnell ahead of Allison Lundergren by one point. Um, but the prior number really jumped out and had a lot of people kind of scratching their heads and saying, that's, you know, uh, not nearly as good as they wanted it to be. Uh, but there's two things that, that if you look deeper into the numbers, uh, explain that this may just be kind of a weird sample. Uh, and, you know, the, the situation may be much closer to the neck and neck uh, race that most other recent polls had indicated. In North Carolina, you know, it's a midterm election. Usually turnout goes down in a midterm election. Uh, compared to a presidential year election. And you know, uh, will you get some people voting for the first time in 2014? Sure, but you're not going to get a lot of them. You know, basically, it's people who turned 18 and maybe some people who weren't all that active or interested in politics, but who you know, then do get interested. Well, in the samples, in North Carolina, they had 21% saying that they did not vote in 2012, but that they intended to vote this year, which seems a bit high. Sure. And then in Arkansas, it's nearly one-third of the sample, 32%. So that's weird. <laughs> you know, you're just, you're not likely to get that many first time voters. You know, in a good year, particularly for a midterm, you might get like five to 10%. And then maybe in a big presidential year, maybe it jumps up a bit. So that's a little strange, but even, you know, wipe that away. Um, in Arkansas, 52% say they would never vote for someone who voted for the uh, Obamacare. <laughs> bad news for Senator Pryor. Yeah. In Louisiana, it's 58%. That's bad news for Senator Landrieu. And in North Carolina, it's 53%. So if you're an incumbent Democrat who voted for Obamacare, um, as long as, as Republicans can turn this election into a referendum on Obamacare, uh, they're in deep doo-doo. So, uh, you know, nothing shocking out of these numbers other than maybe the prior one, which looks, you know, emits a bit of an odd odor. Um, but as expected, Republicans have good shots in all, in all these states. All right, so a memo to these Democrat uh, current incumbents. You may want to start talking to MSNBC about becoming a pundit <laughs> come next year. <laughs> uh, you know, I, was, I actually had a chance to be around an event where uh, Pryor was having a, a uh, fundraiser on literally on K Street at some restaurant. Right. And the joke was that he was, he was doing job interviews. <laughs> Here's my headshot. Here's my resume. Call me. Oh my gosh! All right, well that's a that's a very good martini. It's exciting if the if the numbers are a little strange. It's it's still a very exciting story. Uh, there's another one that's coming down the pipe here though. Uh, it's a bad martini. It involves Eric Cantor leadership challenges. What's going on here, Jim, with this story? Yeah, I mean, look. On the one hand, you're used to seeing some griping and some grumbling from House conservatives about their leadership. It does feel like it has ratcheted up a notch. And the gripes against Eric Cantor, who, um, you know, a lot of people thought might be speaker someday and was, uh, you know, generally on, on fairly good terms with them, um, things have really soured. Uh, most notably, um, he there was a key Medicare bill that got passed by voice vote, and a lot of conservatives didn't like that. I mean, voice votes are kind of a way, you know. You just say, ah, uh, you don't have a recorded vote. Right. And if you have a, a vote that's difficult and you don't necessarily, people don't really want to be on the record. Uh, they want to be able to say they voted no without ever, ever actually, you know, being recorded as saying no, that's what you do. Right. Um, right. Drudge Report blew that up. And then, of course, he um, uh, attended a summit that uh, is by a group of the, as in the Tea Party. Uh, he's working with Maxine Waters on a flood insurance bill. So he's kind of, you know, one by one, these things are ratcheting up and... You know, as a, a, you know, whip who wants to be a uh, speaker someday, you've you got to be at least on good terms with the House conservatives. If not, you know, super duper, um, you know, they got to feel like they can trust you and respect you and that you'll give them a fair hearing. And just bit by bit, you're, you, every a lot of conservatives in the House caucus are getting good reason to 
um, have a beef with with Eric Cantor. And now you look at that and you think, yeah, maybe this guy isn't going to be speaker someday, and and maybe they won't want him as uh, as a key leader in the party. You know that that it's one of those things. You know. As much as Boehner and Cantor might get excessive grief for having a tough job of leading a very a caucus that's got, you know, everybody from uh, the kind of you know moderate squishes in the middle uh, in right. the in the northeast to to the, you know the rock rib diehard Tea Party conservatives, you know, with, with moments like this, it really feels like Cantor is stepping into the bear trap and not being as careful as he ought to be. So um, something to keep an eye on that that Cantor may be rapidly eroding his. Uh, his, his, you know, his, his good faith with the conservative base in the House caucus. Well, we'll have to see if he does any fundraising events on K Street and mm. interviewing for a consulting position at Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you have a guy running against him, he'll be fine. He'll, he'll be around, just a question of whether he'll be in leadership. Very good point, Jim Garrity. All right, very good. Uh, this one's crazy, man. I got to be honest with you. I, I've got both hands on the, uh, 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 on the chair here. I'm trying to hold myself in. Tell me it ain't true. The IRS gave bonuses to IRS employees who were who were tax cheats. This is one crazy martini, Jim Garrett. Yeah, you know, I guess on the one hand, you want to high five the Department of Treasury's Inspector General, uh, who revealed that from October 2010 to December 2002, <clears throat> notice right as the Obama re-election campaign <laughs> is kicking up, the IRS paid more than 2.8 million in bonuses to employees who had recent disciplinary problems, and here's the real great part, including <laughs> 1 million to workers who owed back taxes. Oh! Now, <laughs> now, you would think if you worked at the IRS, paying your taxes would be something really, really important because like, you know, like, all of us live in fear of the IRS. Yes. I guess if you work there, you know, hey, hey, somebody's short. Oh, it's Lenny over in the other, uh, let him go, it's all right. <laughs> no biggie. So and then Lenny, I, I don't know if there's actual an employee named Lenny. It's a it's a stand-in name. Of course, any IRS employee named Lenny feeling like I'm picking on him and retaliating with an audit. Um, but you know, so you, that that, uh, that that you know that uh, they they get they get bonuses, um, and you know the other other misconduct. You know, they included missing using uh, government credit cards for travel, drug use. <laughs> Violent threats, you know, what? What? Like, violent threats, and you still get a bonus. And you know, you're like, how did this happen? Well, now it turns out more than 70,000 IRS workers got cash bonuses. Like, oh my gosh! So you're looking at that, and you're saying, like, what do you have to do to not get a bonus? You know, uh, because apparently violent threats aren't enough. That's right. <laughs> Maybe audit a liberal group. Maybe that'd be the you know, denial. There you go. Yeah. People but from the American the way. Is, um, they really, you know, Brett, uh, you're Brett, not Greg. Uh, old habits there. I'm Lenny. <laughs> good news is we've reduced from an entire, you know, 70,000 workers getting cash bonuses to, in 2012 budget year, only 68,000. So um, a good 2,000 of those workers just weren't good enough to get that bonus. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, I look. We've had a couple of martinis here. I may be a little woozy. I'm still trying to put together IRS and bonuses. Like, like that right there out of the box, man. Come on now. Now, I, the other thing, I, to give a, a molecule of credit, actually more credit, since I really don't want to get audited based on this podcast. Um, <laughs> to you know, so 3.2 of federal workers owe back taxes, and you look at that, like, really? That's you know. Um, but to give credit where it's due, the Treasury Department, which includes the IRS is lo the lowest delinquency rate in the entire government at 1.1%. <clears throat> so on the the good news is like almost 99% of IRS were, of, of of Department of Treasury workers paid their taxes. Um, it's just that 1%. <laughs> well, look, <laughs> Lenny, that's, Lenny, that's, Lenny do what's right, man. Yeah. Pay, pay those taxes, Lenny. Pay what you owe. Stop exactly. Me. Yeah, you want to talk about tax rates on 1%? Let's start with that 1%, okay? Yes. Amen. Well said. Absolutely right, Jim Garrity. All right, so we got the good martini. The poll numbers looking very, very uh, interesting and promising as we uh, approach the midterm elections. Uh, we've got the uh, the bad martini with uh, Eric Cantor taking a lot of incoming uh, on his uh, on his leadership uh, positions, and the crazy martini, the IRS giving bonuses to tax cheats, even though because I don't want to get audited either. Uh, the IRS has a very stellar compliance rate when it comes to paying taxes so uh, those are certainly three great uh, great martinis to 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 uh to consume to think about to talk about to share with your friends uh listen it's been a blast sitting here with you uh mr jim garrity i know you and greg will be away for the next couple of days but you the three martini lunch will be back on monday thanks so much for having me man i appreciate it always enjoy it brett see you next see you next time
Absolutely. Always fun. I'm Brett Witterbull. That's Jim Garrity. This is the Three Martini Lunch.